Okay, quad setup tuning take two. Tried to do this yesterday, but camera didn't have enough storage, so we're gonna try it again. First thing, a lot of people are getting a Tiny Hawk find a ready to fly kit that has the the goggles, the transmitter, and the quad itself. I've got two myself. Got this one. I got to put blades on. I've configured it. I just haven't flown it yet. And I get this one that I fly regularly. It's got the quad blades on it. Turtle mode blades. But the pids are what tune the quad. How the quad reacts under certain conditions. How locked in it feels. Oscillations. It's sort of a complicated thing. Hopefully nobody saw my password. But you are going to need to download the Betaflight configurator. And this is it. And I am going to plug in a quad just to get it, show the PIDs themselves and how I have gone about tuning this guy this is my little three inch that i built if you search diatone gt m3 pids you're going to get some pids that are extremely loose it's an extremely well for me it's too loose and what i mean by loose let me plug this in and then get the radio and i'll explain a little further You go down to the PID tuning. This is them. You got proportional, integral, and derivative. Feed forward tightens it up a little more. But I've got an Armaton and a Hawk 5 with 6 inch arms right here. This is a top mount where you bat mount the battery on the top. This is a bottom mount where the it hangs. The battery hangs from the bottom. That's why I actually have this piece of carbon right here to protect the battery if I, I don't raise this. This is just my long range setup. As you can see, I even have a, a weird setup, but I've seen Joshua Barbo do this with the crossfire, uh, basically 90 degree with the uh, long range antenna. But these two are going to fly different, so you have to tune them. When you first get a quad, you have to go, let's bring the camera a little closer. And make sure that's getting seen. First, you have to go up into ports and you have to figure out which you are which basically input you have tx and rx is on flight controllers tx is a signal output rx is signal input for this little guy i use uart1 which is input uh it's actually s bus if you actually look at the paperwork let's see if I can find it real quick i'm using the mamba stack but on this right here, you can actually see this up here, right there. That little wire right there, that yellow wire, is the input and that pad that it goes to at the very top corner. So first you have to do that. Always enable expert mode because it just gives you more. After that, you got to go into configuration. I, I do it in this order. First, ports. And then I know the configuration is going to be D shot 600. That's whatever protocol the ESCs are running. It used to be just uh, like PWM, which is pulse width modulation. And then one shot 125 came out, multi shot. And then we got digital. You're going to want to set up your PID loop frequency. For some reason, mine is at 8K, 2K. That's uh, at the speed at which the gyro and the PID loop updates. So 8 kilohertz is 8,000 times a second. Uh, motor idle throttle percent, usually stock with most I've seen is about 4.5 with most stacks. And a lot of the little guys like these, it's like 6 to 7.5 percent. 
and that's basically when you arm the quad, how much percent throttle, and how fast our motor is going to idle. And then you got to go down, you can name it maximum arm angle. So with that, it would be, do you want it to be able to arm at any orientation? And personally, I do, because it can get you out of bad situations. Uh, which receiver you're using? I use Spectrum with this one. I use F port. One wire, you get uh, S bus plus telemetry. Yes, yeah, slows the signal down a little bit, but I'm not racing this one yet. And then you go down here and you can set up your other features, such as soft serial if you're using it. Most of the time, you're not using it. Telemetry, LED strip if you're using that. Display, channel forwarding, forwarded aux channels to servo outputs with quads we don't use that transponder we uh that's for if you're racing air mode i always turn air mode on that's air mode basically keeps the quad in this is my acrobat this is comparing the armaton chameleon and these two is very similar this is the top mount this is the bottom mount so it all has to do with i put if i try to put the tune from this onto this this is going to be very loose filling because this battery is on top. So where the weight is. The uh, on-screen display gives you all the information, voltage, RSSI value, which is your receiver sig signal strength. Anti-gravity, that basically turns up the PIDs. And we'll get to that in a second. And dynamic filter, I'm, not I'm still learning filters. And then I would save all that, save and reboot. Save and reboot. It's not wanting to save and reboot. And then there's a lot of other stuff down at the bottom. <clears throat> Beep if you're running a beeper. Plus disconnect. Go back into configuration real quick and put my PID look. Okay, it saved and then after that, I would go into my receiver and make sure all these are running. They're working. So if I was to plug in a battery, power up the receiver, power up my radio, you would see all these working. You got your throttle, your yaw, your pitch, which is your elevators, and your ailerons, which is your roll. After that, I go to modes. I set up my modes, which with this, I just have arm, just so I can arm the motors, because stock, all it is, is... Keep uh, throttle all the way down, yaw all the way to the right, it'll arm it, yaw all the way to the left, will disarm it. It's a lot easier to have it on a switch. So if you crash, you can just flip the switch and maybe not blow out a motor or an ESC. After that, I go to the OSD, set up my on-screen display, everything I see in the goggles, which is a uh, throttle percentage. That's for other people to see when I'm flying. My, uh, my DVR, my RSSI, my voltage, and how long it has been. That actually needs to be, yeah, five minutes is what I need. But that's the main ones I use. I don't like to put a lot on. I don't like the cross hairs, the horizons, the artificial horizon, horizon sidebars. That gets in the way. That's maybe good if you're using acro or horizon mode, which actually stabilizes. If you let go of the sticks, it flattens out. Then once you're done all that, you have to go to PID tuning. Most ready to fly quads, they have a baseline PID tune where it flies pretty good. With this build, I had to tune myself. It had some oscillations, some warbling oscillations. If you have warbling oscillations, that's D term is too high derivative right here if you have oscillations that more that are more of a high pitch and in time not warbling that would be your proportionals too high and my proportional is probably too high so just to go ahead and do it uh, I'm gonna go down three points on this on roll well no let's make it five points and three points on pitch whoops 
Uh, in just a second, I'll explain those. You also have your RC rate and your super rate, and you have this little graph right here. RC rate is how it fills in the middle of a stick. RC rate is in the center. Super rate is way over here, how fast it spins. I personally like 110 RC rate and 0.82 super rate. Allows me to do snap rolls, snap flips, stuff like that. Uh, I gotta set every Every one does 1222 degrees per second. Really allows every stick to be synced into one another. But proportional, getting the pigs themselves, proportional basically is going to how locked in your quad is. But P and I do that together. If you get on the throttle and you let off the throttle and it pitches any direction or rolls any direction, your interval is too high or I mean, your integral is too low, so you have to turn your integral up. Proportional. A lot of people like to take proportional up until they start getting oscillations. And then you can tune the oscillations out with derivative, or you can just back proportional back down. Like I said, proportional, what I found is it gives you the best locked-in filling for a quad. Derivative. I've, from what I've learned thus far, it's really good for tuning out prop wash, and again, proportional and derivative work together. Derivative, derivative can tune out the oscillations from proportional. And then you got feed forward, I just leave that stock if I want it to tighten up. Like when I do, when I make a turn or something, if I want it to feel a little tighter, I can increase feed forward on whichever axis I want it to be tighter on. Because you got roll, pitch, and yaw, so roll, roll, pitch, yaw. And then you have a lot of other stuff. Uh, pig controller settings down here, feed forward transition, acro trainer limit. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I don't use angle or horizon. I don't use any of that stuff. Uh, here's anti-gravity. I usually like smooth anti-gravity. But step anti gravity for racing. But yeah, with the pitch, like I said, proportional and integral. Integral mainly when you let off your throttle, okay, is it going to stay in the same orientation that I left it in when I let go of the sticks when I drop throttle 100%? Because that's what air mode does, it keeps it in whatever orientation you left it at when you drop the throttle to zero. But the motors are still spinning. That's air mode allows you to continue flying, continue uh, having control of the craft with throttle at zero percent. Before air mode, you actually had to have a throttle step up, where basically when you armed it, it would automatically give the quad some throttle so no matter what even if you gave it zero throttle the motors would never stop spinning because you, you can't control it if the motor stops spinning with acro and racing you really got to have that you know a lot of people don't even go with that they just go with complete acro mode but along with this you also have tpa which is throttle pitch attenuation Usually I set mine to 1850 and to 30.30 and what that does is it starts dropping the pids at a certain throttle point so 850 that would be at a, at a percentage about 85% throttle it starts dropping the uh, the pids and it does it uh, at a certain rate and uh, the actual TPA set point is how fast it does it. I'm still sort of learning TPA but with pids it's actually pretty easy there are other videos where Joshua Bardwell has done it uh, he has done a great video. That's what taught me the most. I've watched several videos, but I always understood the theory of it, but wasn't able to put it into practice. Now I've actually learned it, and I'm still tuning this, and that's why I dropped proportional, because when I would do a hard pylon turn, 180 degree turn, 
I was able to get rid of all, almost all the prop wash, but it was a little too tight. It was locked in a little too low, too much. So I had to drop roll and pitch. So when I go around a curve, it won't oscillate when I go around a curve. You're never going to get rid of prop wash. Prop wash is what happens if when you go into a turn and you go back through your own dirty air, the prop's dirty air, it's going to have to go through that air and that can cause it to act a little weird. Oscillate. And you can tune that out. Never expect to tune it out 100%. You can get it to like 95, 98%, but there's always going to be a little bit of prop wash because the flight controller can never 100% sense exactly how dirty the air is that it's going to come back through. So, yeah. Um, make sure that's saved. But you also have profiles that you can set up if you want to try different ones. You can set it up and then you can go to profile 2 or 3. So if profile one isn't working, you can set up a different profile. That'll be completely different. You have different rate profiles, which is RC rate and super rate. But that's what PID tuning is. And this is beta flight. When you first connect, when you first get a quad, you're going to have to, well, one thing I've learned with a Tiny Hawk, you're gonna have to go CLI, type in dump and it will give you everything. You will need that if you buy another Tiny Hawk, you need all of this information to send over to the other because that transmitter, from what I've learned, I don't have, I have my own transmitter, but with the, the transmitter that comes with it, you actually have to do everything from CLI. CLI is actually where you actually write the code itself. So these are all the coding for how the quadcopter flies. What does what? LEDs, beacon, beeper, features. Basically tells the quad everything to do. And then you take that and then you move it over to the next Tiny Hawk. But yeah, that's pretty much beta flight. But once you get into it, once you get a new quad, let's disconnect. My computer's being slow this morning. I don't know why. Disconnect. Uh, there are three right here, here, and here. You got to download the CP210X driver, the STM USB VCP driver, and the Zadig driver. So your computer can recognize the flight controller because if you just plug one of these things in, it's not going to connect. You have to download the drivers. One of them you actually have to put in your email address and register, and then from your email, you go back and you can download it. That one's a little annoying. I think that's the STM USB VCP driver. But, yeah, and uh, you have firmware flasher, which sadly with Betaflight, they're all, not sadly, they're always improving stuff. With I have a KISS quad, it's version 1. You can update it, but they don't have many updates, as many updates as this. Like right now, I mean, this just shows how many versions they've had. 3.20, 3 3.2, 3.2.0, 3.2.1, 3.2.2, 3.2.3, 3.2.3, 3.2.0, uh, everything from 3.2.0 to 3.2.5. And then it starts at 3.3.0. To 3.3.3, .3, then start at 3.4.0, 3.4.1, and then we finally have what we have now, 3.5.0. The newest one is 3.5.5. That's what this flight controller on this little guy is running in most of my quads. Uh, the older stuff doesn't have the feed forward and stuff like that. Uh, feed forward had to do with uh, weight. Uh, crap, can't remember the term. So let's plug the quad back in so we can actually look. Set point weight, I believe it's called. And that's done in PID tuning. This, it all has to do with... Yeah. Uh, feed forward actually got rid of the set point weight. I believe it was called because it's it's gone now. 
and you have the feed forward transition. If you have the question that says, with this parameter, the feed forward turn can be reduced near the center of the sticks, which results in smoother end of flips and rolls. Also, with derivative, if you have what's known as bounce back, if you go to do a roll and you do a roll and then it bounce backs a little, your derivative is too high. Also with derivative, as you start going higher, watch the temperature of your motors because you will easily fry a motor if you do not pay attention. And like I said, proportional and derivative work together. And then integral basically keeps the quad at the attitude that you left it at the last time you moved it in a certain direction. But come, we're fine unless you're doing a long range and you're just just going and not moving anything. I mean, usually when I do stuff like that, uh, when I drop throttle and I don't touch the sticks for a second, it's when I'm dropping from a power loop, possibly, or a split S. But even then, I'm giving a little bit of pitch. So, but that's what air, a lot of people ask. What's the difference between air mode and not having air mode at all? With air mode, you're going to need a throttle, throttle set. Uh, a throttle, I can't remember what the hell the term is. But basically, when you flip on a switch, uh, Mr. Steel and Snake FPV actually did a video on this where it ha they had a throttle. What the hell was it called? I wish I could remember off the top of my head, but there's, there's just so much. Basically, it throttles the motors up. Even at zero throttle on a stick, the motors will keep spinning. That's what air mode does, it keeps the motor spinning. That's why, so you can arm. When you arm, it keeps going. And also, over here, some people like the motors to stop even when the motors are armed. That sort of gets rid of, at zero throttle, that's what motor stop will do. They will, at zero throttle, the motors will stop even if it's armed. So, yeah, that's sort of a very basic rundown of PIDs. If anyone would like a more detailed version of this, uh, feel free to comment below. I can send links to Joshua Bardwell's video, uh, Project Blue Falcon, rest in peace. X-Jet, he actually talks about proportional, integral, and derivative. Basically, proportional looks at the past. Integral looks at right now. Derivative looks at the future, what it's expecting to happen. And XJet, that guy, that older man, uh, he used a stopwatch, and that's really confusing. It would have been better if he actually used a quadcopter to show instead of a stopwatch that was just hanging by a dial, I mean by a thread moving back and forth, because, I mean, that's just a pendulum effect. And that's sort of what you get with these. You get a pendulum, of, somewhat of a pendulum effect, because you got a lot of weight on the bottom. This is a bad battery, but the battery's on the bottom like this, and because all that weight's down there, you get somewhat of a pendulum effect. You get the opposite with this. This is the Acrobrat. It's up top, and it can actually cause it to roll side to side without you wanting it. That's why right now, I'm after this one, I'm tuning this one, because right now this one's a little loose. When I go around turns, it wobbles. And that's just no bueno. So, yeah, if you got any questions, please feel free to comment. I'm trying to get back making uh, videos. I'm very sorry about Nitro. I still have some Nitro vehicles, but I just uh, I just give an idea of how many quads I have. Those are the ones still on the wall. Uh, I got my little deuce right there. The Acrobrat. Uh, the GTM3 Normal X. Up there you have the GTM3 Stretch X next to that painting. You have my uh, IX2. It has, has the Baby Hawk guts. You have my very first build, which is a Martian 2 with an Emac stack and hype train motors. I'm trying out the S3 props from Ethics HQ props. And that is my Kiss Alien. And of course, the almighty Curtis Youngblood Stingray 500 that doesn't fly that often. I have... The two Tiny Hawks. Now there's a... Around here somewhere, there's a Beta FPV 1S brushless board. 
Over here, got a Beta FPV 75X. Um, and you got my Chameleon and my six inch long range Hawk 5. That thing has a, those six inch props have a lot of grunt at the low end. But I really need to get some better, uh, some better motors for it. Those are just, I believe, 2306 motors. 2206, so yeah, and they're 2300 KV. That's too small for me. I like a wider stator and a taller stator. 2507 is, so far, those are my favorite motors. The FPV 2507, 2200 KV. They're very amp hungry, but for a 5, 6, or even 7 inch, they are great. 2200 KV on 5S or 6S, so much grunt. My favorite camera is this camera, the Eagle. This is the Mini Eagle. There's a Micro Eagle as well. I'm running the, oh crap, I can't remember. HGLRC uh, flight engine. Always running the big capacitor. Uh, a lot of people think capacitors are just for video. No, also if uh, you crash, it will take the voltage spike that happens when a motor all of a sudden just stops and the capacitor will absorb that voltage spike. And I'm running a uh, AKK X2 Ultimate in this. A lollipop. Foxy or lollipop. Personally, I like the Lumineer Axie the best. And the radio I use. The X9D Plus SE, I can actually remove this antenna. They actually got rid of this version because a lot of people were powering it off, powering it on without this antenna and having the internal module on. But I have the R9 module in the back so I can run at 900 megahertz longer distance. But if you power it up like this, you can fry the radio. But I can power it up under certain situations where only the external module, this back here, which it just comes out, Crossfire does the same thing. You can get Crossfire for like $75. This is 50 and with this you get two receivers, and it's just nice to have it. You always get a locked-in signal. I really don't do a lot of long range, but it's also nice just to always have a good locked-in signal. But yeah, this video has gotten a little over 25 minutes, so I'm going to end it there. Again, got any questions, comments? If I got anything wrong, please correct me down below. Don't be rude about it. All you gotta do is correct me if I was wrong about something. But yeah, that's uh, that's everything with Beta Flight. Not everything. I mean, there's so much more you can go into, even with the radio. But if you are looking to get into this, you need you stay away from Spectrum unless it's the IX12. Because at least it has a, a module bay in the back. You definitely want that module bay. It allows you to do so much more. I personally like anything with OpenTX because you can change so many different things. With Spectrum, switches are assigned to certain things permanently. You can't just assign any switch you want to what you want it to do. Like with this radio, originally... This right here was just a momentary switch that was spring-loaded, so if you press it, as soon as you let go, it would automatically come back down. But this is my arm switch. I flip it, it arms the motors, I can start flying. Just give it some throttle, take off, and start going. And I will do a video of actually tuning a quad. Uh, I'll probably do it with this one. And this is running the Diatol Mamba Stack. A Tachyon 3500 KV 1408 motors, a Foxier Micro Aero Pro, I've already cracked the case, I've already, this frame, I will say, it's a little heavy, but it is strong. I have slammed this thing into asphalt twice now, and I've just got some carbon rash <laughs> right here in the back, and that's it. And so, yeah, it may be a little heavy, but it's very strong, but Diatone Mamba Stack, uh, AKK FX3 BTX up to 600 milliwatts, which is pretty good for this, but I like 800 milliwatts at least on anything. 
Uh, I'm sort of playing with different props right now. I got HQ props, gym fan props, and my go-to props are the Cyclone 5046s, and I also have some Cyclone 3056s right here, 3 inch, 5.6 inch pitch. But yeah, that's it with uh, quads. So, yeah, if you can give me a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. Sub if you like content. I'm going to get back around to the nitros, I promise. I still got my Mad Force, my Tamiya 801 XT, which is a beast with a 30. Uh, the OS 30 VG Max. Uh, the RS 4-3 Nitro Drift. I've never done a video about it, with it. And the RS 4 Nitro Evo Plus, which I have to put together when I'm done with this. So... And I also still have the Armor Raider, which is nice to have something electric. Just uh, turn on transmitter, flip the switch, and you're ready to go. So, yeah. That's it. Gonna leave it with Betaflight. Thank you for watching. Peace.